pile on in here on this rainy night. I'm out here in Southern California. It is raining cats and dogs out here, but it's all gravy. Glad to have y'all tuning in. Hope you guys are having a pretty good week so far, ladies and gentlemen. Shout out to the international folks who's listening overseas. Shout out to the FBA family with the Majara spirit. Blessing that Majara spirit in the FBA family, waiting on everybody to pile on in. Um, don't forget this Saturday, we're having an event at the Hidden History Museum. The one year anniversary of the Hidden History Museum. You can go to Hidden History Museum dot com for more information to get your RSVP popping. We want to see you in the place. We've got a lot of comedians, great food. We're going to have a great time this Saturday night. But let's get into what we're talking about before I get into the main topic. And then I'm going to take some calls. We're just waiting on everybody to pile on through. We will take calls later. You know, there's been a couple of incidents where some officers then got hit lately. And um, an officer, was it? It was a, a few of them then got hit around the country. One up in Minnesota, there was um, like a standoff, and three white officers got hit and taken out. And they were doing all of this um, candlelight vigils and. Um, processions, a, a bunch of cars doing these processions down the road. I don't know. Uh -oh, it must have been a brother who did it then. Whenever they, whenever you see when, when officers get hit and there was another situation in Tennessee where brother, they pulled him over and they start tasing him and abusing him. So he just pulled the thing out and let loose. And then they, um, they caught up with him. They caught this cat and, um, you know, they, they're doing the I'm white and I say so. They done threw charges on his girlfriend. Um, they threw charges on his brother for an accessory. They threw charges on another friend of his who bought him a phone. So when it's a black person, boy, they they know how to charge everybody around you. They figure out how to, they charge everybody. Now these white kids or white dudes go out here and shoot up schools and, and do these mass shootings. Oh, they were lone wolves. They were by themselves. They didn't know nobody. They stayed to the, no, nah, please. They lone wolf the hell out of them. But this brother then shot some, some officers and everybody around him is getting charges put on him who had nothing to do with it. <clears throat> so they got them all in slave laws for us but it is what it is but yeah we're seeing this thing and and they were doing the whole procession and the whole candlelight vigil thing and i want y'all to notice something they only do that you only really really see that when it's a black suspect and white officers there's this whole military tribute like okay you're a casualty of war because that's what they look at it as up in minnesota i didn't even know what the suspect was but the way they were acting up there just all of them gathering around by the hundreds and uh, okay this must be a brother because you know they this is like they look at the situation with us as an um a constant war so when there is a retaliation or any type of um, hit on them in the dominant society, especially with law enforcement, boy, they, they got to really get codified because in their minds, if black people are taking out law enforcement, getting on that Micah Johnson vibe, then it's a wrap. That's their mind. Because the local law enforcement in white supremacist culture, that's the last line of defense. So if you got brothers out here who's not afraid to take them out, then the rest of the society is like, oh my God, they start shaking in their boots because we have to understand local police, That's they look at them as their personal security guards, their personal bodyguards. That's why the Karens always running up on black folks, calling the cops, trying to get people hit. So they don't like the police. They only like them so that the police can 
be used and weaponized against us. And when we are not showing any fear for retaliation, for going after these um, people in the in law enforcement, if we're not saying, hey, we're saying we don't want to be abused, and people start taking these different courses of action, the dominant society, they get on alert real quick and they get real nervous because they're like, if the cops are gone, they're going to be next. That's that's their mentality. They really think like that. You see, it's a real deep dynamic out here. It's a real deep dynamic. I saw a video where um, this dude was teaching black kids how to act during a police stop. It was like telling the black kids, uh, he mentors these kids, and he was like, yeah, when the police pull you over, um, be real calm, which, uh, which is true. You got to act like you are a prisoner of war. That's very true. And if you act this way, you know, just be cool. And yeah, when they say get out the car, just get out the car. Don't argue, which is true. See, the cop just want to go home. You, you want to go home, the cop want to go home. Uh, no, no, just tell the truth, tell the truth. Now, a lot of the techniques this guy was telling the kids was correct, but tell them the whole truth. Yes, when you get pulled over by a cop, he could be a potential race soldier. So you act like you are a prisoner of war. Don't be yelling. Don't argue with him. You know, just comply. Um, you know, get you a lawyer later and you argue in court, but don't be out there on the side of the road arguing with these race soldiers. It's going to go left. You're already at a disadvantage. But you also keep in mind that you have card carrying white supremacists within law enforcement who will, will try to gaslight you into a situation where they can blow your head off. That's a reality black folks need to really stop playing around with. You better understand, like down in um, Florida, did y'all see, and I talked about this last week, um, this white Latino officer detained this black dude, put him in the back of the car. An acorn fell on the car. So this race soldier jumped on the ground, acting like he got shot and started busting at the car, just emptied a couple of clips on the car. And then yelled to the female officer who was down the street and she started busting because she saw him acting a fool. So he ended up getting, I think they, I don't know if they fired him, but he, you know, the, the they don't get fired, they get transferred. So he got to resign and, you know, he'll get with another agency. But just the fact that he did all of that theatrical nonsense, and, and luckily the brother didn't get hit. But sounds like this guy was trying to get some kind of law enforcement initiation thing because they get they get initiated in these little <sighs> low-key white supremacist groups when they can hit a black person it's just like the skinheads in the Aryan nation they get certain stripes and they get to rise up to certain levels if they get to take out a black person so same thing in law enforcement so that looked like it was some kind of um ritualistic thing where this guy was trying to get initiated into something by taking a brother out and using the acorn falling on the car as an excuse. He knew good and well that brother wasn't shooting at him. Let's be clear. He knew that man who was in the back of his car was not shooting at him, but he was going to use that as an excuse. You see? So it's a real deep dynamic out here. It's a real deep dynamic. Again, they look at the situation as a situation of warfare. And again, if you get pulled over, keep in mind that this race soldier will possibly try to gaslight you. So you really got to watch what you say when they try to gaslight you into saying something that they can use to justify harming you. That's the key thing. Because what they'll do, they know how to push black people's buttons they know how to pull you over for nothing. And what happens is nobody wants to be unjustly targeted. Yeah, you're going to be like, damn, what did I do? I didn't do nothing. We we got that thing where we're yelling, we didn't do nothing, we didn't do nothing, we didn't do nothing. And then you get frustrated because they're trying to escalate it. And you're, you're yelling too. So that's what they want. They want to be in a position where they can start tasing you and guns are drawn. <clears throat> now, that brother in Tennessee took it to a whole different level. And see, it kind of backfired on the um, the race soldiers, the suspected race soldiers. It backfired on them. 
and then a couple got taken out. But the thing is, they will gaslight you. They'll roll up on you. Hey, man, I smell weed. Uh, no, you don't. But it's on white, and I say so. Well, you look high. You look suspicious. What? I didn't do nothing. What you talking about? I didn't do man. When you do all that, just stay cool. Just say, hey, hey, officer, that's what it, I don't. I didn't do anything. And if you think that, well, I have to get a lawyer. Just be real cool about it. Learn how to be cool with these traffic stops and understand where you are. You're dealing with these race soldiers who are in a position to take you out in the name of white supremacy. That's what it is. They've allowed card carrying white supremacists to be a part of law enforcement. And that's what it is. And they will be abusive. They will gaslight you and they'll be abusive. So you need to teach your kids the game. Um, and also we need to be constantly working on replacing that system because that's a janky ass system to be in where we have to walk on eggshells doing normal everyday stuff. You want to go to the grocery store and then all of a sudden that turns into some white supremacist act of terrorism where somebody's trying to take you out because they're trying to get initiated into a white supremacist gang within law enforcement. And then the dominant society tries to deny it when there's so much proof of it. That's another thing. The, the rest of the dominant society gaslights you too by being in denial about a lot of stuff. So we got to understand the game out here. Shout out to everybody coming in the room right now. Boy, we're in here heavy like we usually are. Shout out to everybody in the room. But uh, we're talking about foundation of black Americans building America. I put up a tweet earlier and it went viral. It was just a real simple tweet because of Joy Reid. Joy Reid um, said a half truth. Um, she was talking about how black people built the country. Black people built America, which is true. And black people deserve reparations, which is true. But I think she started putting some we and us in there. And, oh, no, let's, let's bag it up now. Hold on. I, th I think she might have thrown a we and a us. And no, 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 Joy. Joy is not from our lineage. She doesn't have the Majara spirit. She's She comes from um, Central Africa. That's where her lineage is. No, no disrespect, so... We appreciate her speaking about the need for reparations, but we don't need you to start talking French, talking about we, we, and no, no, ain't no we, we now. No, we were talking about the foundation of black Americans. So they kind of felt a certain way. The white supremacists felt a certain way about that. And I put up a tweet. I'm like, hey, shit, real simple. Foundation of black Americans built America. And some of the alt lice got in the comments and they they feel a certain way now i know we have some of them in here what's up nathaniel i see you now some of the people in the dominant society um some of you were in the tweets some of you were commenting one thing you didn't do was refute what i said i mean the truth is the truth i mean the trolling and all of that that just solidifies and verifies the truth in the statement Nobody really refuted it. Is there anybody here from the dominant society who can refute that foundational black Americans built America from the ground up? And every institution came out of the anti-black labor exploitation that this country held. All of the institutions were born out of that exploitation of our black labor. I mean, every institution. I would like for somebody to prove otherwise. We got to talk Turkey here, and I want my foundation of black American family to understand your significance here. Because I don't want them running around talking about some damn cotton. It went way beyond cotton. We were doing way more than just the cotton. We were creating so many things within the slave system that we could not get credit for. For years, for decades, for centuries, we couldn't even get credit for the things that we were actually creating. That's why after slavery, 
we could finally legally get the credit for all the stuff that we created. And then, bam, we got 50,000 patents coming out of nowhere. It didn't come out of nowhere. We were already doing this stuff. Now, I would like for some people to, to prove otherwise. Tell me something else about history if that's not true. Nobody else built this country except foundational black Americans. We built this thing from the ground up. We were the labor force. We were also the architects and the engineers, um, many of the scientists. We were the healers. Everybody got game from us. I want to hear otherwise, since people felt a certain way and since the tweet went viral with a whole bunch of trolling and, and joking and playing, <laughs> but bring some scholarship to it. Let's let's talk turkey. Let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's get um dark groper. All right. And as the saying goes, trolling proves me right. So Dark Groper, we got Dark Groper, and we got your buddy, the Seek Groper. So let's get either one of you. <clears throat> That's good, bro. I'm a huge fan. What's up, Dark Groper? So you're, you're one of them um, alt-right 4chan guys, I can tell, with that name. Now, where you from, bro? Uh, I'm from a city. Okay. Why are you guys so ashamed of where you're from, man? No, I don't want you to come here and try to fight me, bro. I'm not trying to fight you, but you're already defensive, being evasive about where you're from. And you you sound Latino. Are you Latino? No. What's your family ethnic background? White. Okay, that's real vague. And you don't sound white, white. You don't sound Anglo. There are Latinos who are white, by the way. What would Anglo sound like to you? Not like you. I, I I hear I hear burrito on your voice. Shout out to my boy burrito. There you go. Um, so what's on your mind? So I heard you say that black people were healers. Do you mean that in like an avatar, like the movie sense, like a healer like that, or like what is what is a black healer? Black people were the the ones healing people from sicknesses. We were stopping plagues over here. They would go to us for herbal, medicinal um, elixirs to stop what was ailing them. And we were doing this all across the board. In what way, though? Like, was it, were they like medical professionals or were they just like rubbing dirt on someone's cut in like the jungle? Well, OK. Do you um, this? This is why I asked where you're from in the 1700s. You didn't have the medical industry as we do now. So if a person got a snake bite or somebody got a the flu, how do you think they got better? A lot of times they didn't. There was a really high death rate for that type of shit back then. Right. But then the death rate stopped. Why do you think it stopped? Because white people developed the good stuff to get rid of the bad stuff. Name them. Name, usual. Them. Name them. Name the white people. Uh a lot of them, all of them, probably like 90% of them. Name, name them, sir. Name them. Name them in the 1700s who created all of these things to stop these plagues. Yeah, I'm not like brushed up on my 1700s. Right. So you're just saying, it's just I'm white not saying, so you're just saying something. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thanks, buddy. Now, By root work. There, there you go. All right. There you go. See, this is what I'm talking about. So I'm going to just stop him off because now, you know, he wasn't bringing any scholarship to the game and he was going to try to troll his way out of it. Yeah, if there were white people doing it, name them. There were black people who were the root workers. That's what the root work was. It was the black people who were the root workers and the conjurers. They were going to them. White people weren't doing that. To rubbing the dirt on a cut. The, the white medical people, all they would do was cut your arm off. If your, your leg hurt, they just cut it off. Like, all right, it won't hurt no more because you ain't got no leg. They been doing that type of shit. It was black people who were the healers because we were an agrarian people. We understood herbs and medicine and we knew how to heal ourselves. There's a reason why they were paying the equivalent of $50,000 for a black person. 
at that time. They were paying big money for black people. You weren't paying for sickly people. You understand? You were paying for, for people who were very, very healthy and who knew how to heal themselves and take care of themselves. We were the, the, the medical people here. We were the ones healing the dominant society too. Let's get some more people in here. Let's get some more people. What's up, Miss Lisa Jackson? I see you down here. All right, let's get... um. Okay, well, let's get this West African brother in here. Misabao, Missy Bao. Let me get Missy Bao in here. Yo, what's good? What's up, Missy Bao? I think I'm pronouncing your name right. Yeah. So what's on your mind, Missy Bao? Uh, we talking about FBA Bill America, right? Right. But you said only FBA. I disagree. I think we so? built America until slavery. When immigrants started coming in, that's when things changed. Well, no, the immigrants came to something that was already established. You see, they didn't yeah. come. They didn't come somewhere that wasn't popping. The reason that why they wanted to come was because we got it popping. See. Yeah, but you were being, you weren't the head. We weren't what? You weren't calling all the shots. No, we, we were the labor force and the creative force. Yeah, so part and part, someone had to call all the shots. Someone had to do all the work. That's how it go, right? Well, not really, because they couldn't do it. If they could have done it, they would have done it, but they couldn't. But but they mobilized everything into order, right? But no, what they did, they they manipulated things and put us in a position where we got stuck militarily, and then we were forced to use our genius and our ingenuity to enrich other people, to make the lives of other people better. Hopefully, hoping that we can get about the situation but we got put up in a trick bag that we weren't used to, which is being subjugated based by race, based on race. That was something that was new, and we got caught up in a military twist. We couldn't get out of it because they built the military around that shit, and we're still stuck in it. That doesn't negate the creativity and the ingenuity and the Mojaro spirit that we had to build the greatness of the country. You understand? That's true, but immigrants also built the country. No. No, they did. What immigrant built the country? Uh, I'll say Mexicans, definitely. Well, why Mexico looking like it's looking now? Now, nah, we're talking about America right now. No, I'm well, if you're talking about Mexicans, that's like that you, means, that's okay, like that, means, that means that they Mexico should be popping. Then how come Mexico ain't popping? Mexico is popping, though. Popping what? Popping to get Tourism. the hell up out of there? Tourism. How is it popping? How was it popping and people are rushing to the border right now in the rain? That's that's not Mexicans though. That's Venezuelans. Oh, stop it! You you Dude, know that's Venezuelans. You can stop. stop. Everyone you see building these skyscrapers stop. is Mexicans. Stop All these construction it. workers, Mexicans. Dude, stop. Let's keep it what, up. What, no, bro. what's building the skyscrapers are machines. That's nah, what's building them. Is Mexicans. No, Mexican. This Mexican machine. It's machines <laughs> building them now. Stop it. If you don't stop, they get, they're building these things with machines now. You understand? So let's, let's not tell lies. But thank you so much. Well, don't be disingenuous now. And shout out to Mexico. I'm not dumping on Mexico. But you can't sit here and say they built America. And no. When? And if you did, when? When did you build some America? When did that happen? See, people just be saying stuff. That ain't true. Okay, let's get um, who is this um, burrito groper? You don't be saying nothing, man. I've, I've had you on before. You don't say nothing. All right. Let me see. Let's get um, we got a lot of folks in here. 
Y'all raise your hand if you want to get on. Raise your hand because we're, we're deep in the room. And speaking of root work, you go to rootworkstyle.com to get your root work deodorant. Rootworkstyle.com. Let's get a rise in here. Let's get a rise in here from, look like he's from West Africa. Arise, where you from, Arise? Arise, where's that flag from? Arise, turn your microphone on. He must still be over there where that flag is because the reception is horrible. All right, while we're waiting on Arise, we'll get Lizway. Let's get Lizway in here. Lizway? Lizway or Lizway? What's up? Is it Lizway or Lizway? Sir, are you are you washing the must from under your arms right now, sir? No, no, no. Can you hear me now? I can hear you, sir. All right, Terry. Thanks for having me on, bro. I've been a yes, big fan of you for a long time. Is it, um, now, your now your name, Lizway or Leesway? How to pronounce it? Both are fine. That's like both both ways. It's fine. You, it's okay. the same thing. Yeah. Okay. Now, where are you from, brother? Southern Africa. South, South African okay. Zimbabwe. Yeah. Okay, so, there you go. Yeah. What's on um, your mind, brother? Sorry. So, what do you think about Zimbabwe, bro? I mean, I don't know if you know a lot about it, but basically it's the same thing. You know, you kick, you kick out the uh, kick out the white man and you try and do your own thing and then you kind of get screwed over. So, um, I just see like a similar struggle with the uh, FBA, you know? Yeah. Struggle for recognition, uh, self determination, but obviously it's like on opposite ends of the globe, um, one of the different continents. But um, I don't know, do you, you got anything there? It just kind of yeah. seemed like this. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I rock with Zimbabweans. You know, I rock with the people in Zimbabwe. I've been over there and the people are very lovely. Um, I like their energy. I like the vibe. The thing is with them, Zimbabwe, yeah, when they got the white supremacists up out of there, um, they started getting a lot of sanctions on Zimbabwe. The Western powers kind of doubled down and put weird sanctions on them. Um, the the money, out of, they can't have U.S. dollars like that. It's a real weird thing over there with the money and um, even the, the flights, the, air, the airlines. Um, the flights don't go out of certain places they got to go to south africa first so they got all types of weird trick bags on south africa i mean on um zimbabwe but i rock with zimbabwe and i love the people there i got a lot of respect for them but thank you z-way yeah you go there's a lot of noise back there z-way i don't know if you were washing your jackal i don't know what you were doing back there brother you were doing a lot of stuff from the culture of the american south where roots hold stories, comes a natural deodorant inspired by generations of wisdom. Introducing Root Work, the all-natural foundational Black American-based deodorant infused with the magic of High John the Conqueror Root. Our unique blend enriched with this legendary root offers 24-hour protection rooted in the power of nature. Embrace this deodorant that celebrates culture, history, and your well-being. Unlock the magic of root work today. Experience the pure essence of nature. Visit rootworkstyle.com and make the switch to a healthier cultural choice. <laughs> 